Her message was one sentence. This is a piece of crap. She wrote again in another message, I want all of my money back. Hey everyone, welcome back to another car chat. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Beth. I live in Houston and I sell part-time on eBay and Poshmark, mostly pre-owned plus-size clothing, appliance parts, and now I have started some home decor items in my stores. That just kind of describes me. I also have an outside job where I work two days a week in the office and remotely. And then I'm on call three days a week for any problems that should come up. All right, before we talk about this scammer, who eBay admits is probably a scammer, uh, let me talk about today. I was gonna go live. I wanted to see you guys so much and talk to you. However, we have rats in our attic, rats. They've been keeping us up at night the guys come in today to seal off any spaces that they see, any holes, and that's going to involve a lot of hammering. So for that reason, no live today, maybe tomorrow on Thursday. Okay, so now we're going to talk about this woman who tried to scam me and never had this situation before. So a couple of weeks ago, this woman ordered a Croft Barrow lightweight rope from me, and she opened up a case that the item had not been received. When I went over to the order, it showed that the item had been delivered. And so, you know, I updated the tracking, or I just, I, I messaged her, and I said, you know, it shows it's been delivered, you know, same old thing, check with your postal carrier, check with your neighbors, blah, blah, blah. And she kept saying, I have not received this item. I have not received this item. So finally she opened up a dispute. Well, Thursday before Friday, it was supposed to close on Friday. I was supposed to do something by Friday, but I had to work on Friday. So I had eBay call me on Thursday and the rep told me, oh, yeah, it shows delivered, you're covered, this will close on Saturday in your favor, which means I get to keep my money, and um, so I was like, okay, cool. Well, Saturday, something told me to go in and look at it. I think I must have gotten some kind of message or something, and I went in and looked at it, and it said the case was closed in the buyer's favor, so they took $18.99 from my account and gave her $18.99 back. That was the total amount of the sale. I was fuming. I had company, out of town company. I had people coming for a party, but I couldn't let it go. So I had eBay call me in the middle of all that chaos. And I talked to the rep and I told her, you know, what was going on. And she looked at it and she said, well, it says it was delivered in this town in Pennsylvania. But she actually lives one town over or in another town, Elizabeth Town, I think it is. And I said, well, I, I, how am I supposed to know that? It says delivered. I'm, I'm taking your word for it, you know? And she said, yeah. She said last week, um, the post office, the USPS, had some issues with their delivery messages or whatever. And every a lot of people got caught up in it. And so, for that reason... We are going to uh, give you back your $18.99 that we took from you. So basically, they sided with the buyer and they sided with the seller, both of us. So we both got our money, right? I got my money. She got her money back. So then, fast forward to this week, I get this message from her. And I'd totally forgotten about her. You know, it was gone. And she, her message was one sentence. This is a piece of crap. It tells me nothing other than she's unhappy with the item. 
And before I could respond, she wrote again in another message, I want all of my money back. So we went back and forth, you know, I told her, I said, you know, we have 60 day free returns, please open up a return case and a label will be sent to you at no cost to you, you know, and also thank you for contacting us. Could you please just give us an idea about what was wrong with the item? so that I can pass this along to my quality control department. It would really be helpful, thank you. Like, I was very pleasant in the first few messages. So then she writes back and she says, I don't wanna return it because I'm gonna lose my original shipping. I want all of my money back. So I started to get a little pissy here. I said, please listen. Free returns means you don't pay for the postage back. And when we receive the item, we will refund you your original shipping. Again, can you please let us know what you didn't like about the item instead of just saying it's a piece of crap. That would be very helpful. Thank you. So then she writes back and I don't know, this went on a couple more messages. She still would not tell me what was wrong with the item. And, and when, when I realized that, I'm, I'm looking at that robe and I'm thinking, this looks very familiar, this robe. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the one where she won the case and then I appealed it and then I won the case. And I thought, I think they already gave her her money back. Could they recharge her? when I won the case, when I won the appeal. So that's when I had eBay call me and I explained everything, they looked at everything and they said no, they said, we have a contract with you as a seller, so we have the ability to charge you $18.99, but we don't have a contract with the buyer, so once we refund the buyer, we don't have a way of recharging them. So she got her money back on October 3rd. And I got to thinking about it and I'm like, okay, so, and did she even receive the item? Like I'm still getting messages saying she didn't receive the item. So what I'm thinking is uh, two things. Either she didn't get the item and because it said delivered, she's pretending she got the item and didn't like it and she's wanting her money back. Or she received the item, knows that she got a refund and is still trying to get an extra $18.99 back. And the eBay rep agreed with me, agreed with me and told me, yeah, she's possibly trying to scam you. Um, I would recommend that you block her from any future purchases. And then I said, okay. I said, well, let me play devil's advocate here. What if this buyer comes back and leaves me a negative feedback? Will it be removed? And you know what the rep told me? She said, maybe, maybe not. That was the buyer's experience. I was pissed. I was so pissed. So far, she hasn't left me a negative feedback. And I'm thinking it's because she knows I've been in contact with eBay because my last message to her after speaking to the rep was, I spoke with Christian from eBay. He looked up your case. You were refunded in full $18.99 on October 3rd. Please discard the item. I was going to put if you actually have it. And um, and then I said, and if you have any other questions, just please call eBay and they will look at your case. And again, I wrote several times I wrote this. Thank you so much for your kindness. I had a draft that said, thank you so much for your kind words. It made my day, but I took it off. <laughs> but it made me feel good just to type it. Okay, so guys, that's a scam. And um, I don't, if I haven't received feedback already, uh, if this is not someone who tech, you know, usually checks their emails where it says, you know, leave 10 of hearts a feedback, then she'll probably just forget about it. But if she's one that checks her emails daily, she might. But anyway, she knows that eBay knows that she's tried to pull this. So maybe in the back of her mind, she's thinking, 
it would be removed anyway. But they may not remove it. Isn't that something? So for those of you who haven't seen Philly Flipper's last video, um, he is no longer going to be listing anything else on eBay. And I think it's really interesting because a lot of people who talk on YouTube say the same words about the feedback. It's, that was the buyer's experience. So you know that is typed up in bold, underlined italics in front of them. This is what you say when a seller says, will you re um, remove this negative feedback? Well, no, that was the buyer's experience. You know, was it really the buyer's experience? I don't think she ever got it personally, but she may have. But let me tell you something. This is I've been selling on eBay for like almost eight years. And whenever somebody is pissed, as as pissed off as this lady was, you know, this is a piece of crap. She, you know, exclamation point. Whenever somebody is upset about an item, they get the item and it's not what they wanted, or it's got a tear in it or a stain in it, you better believe they tell you every little thing that's wrong with it. Okay, um, these pants are shorter than they were, you know, the measurements weren't right. There's a tiny hole where the tag was. There's a stain under the armpit. There's a, you know, the pockets don't, it, there's, they always tell you when they're mad. And she couldn't come up with a single thing. She wasn't a very good, clever scammer because she could have said, um, you know, there's a stain. Of course, when I would have gotten it back, I would have seen that there wasn't. But, um, and she never, well, she did ask me for a refund. Yeah, she did ask me for a refund before shipping it back. So she wasn't going to ship it back because I don't think she has it truthfully. Um, but anyway, so that's the new scam. My sales are okay. I had one of the best days ever on eBay the day before yesterday. I mean, I woke up to $130 in sales that morning. I knew this is going to be a great day. Plus Poshmark. Poshmark's been doing okay. So, um, so you guys know they took away my second store categories. I can no longer sort that way. I've been calling eBay about that too. I'm like, look, this is what my business model is based off of. I can't even mark these things down because I can't find them because you've hidden them. They used to be there. They're gone. They're still there, but I can't sort by them. And she's like, yeah. And I said, well, the, the ticket was open October 7th. Today's the 21st. I mean, it's been, you know, almost two weeks. Come on. They were there. They took them away. They haven't put them back, you know. So yesterday when I woke up, I was like in a good mood because the day before had been such a great day. And I start setting my sales. And I set one, two, three, four. I set five sales a day. 10% um, off, 20, 30, 40, and then 75 is my liquidation sale. And I still have quite a few items in that liquidation section I want to, you know, sell off. So I did the 10, 20, 30, 40 sale. I get to the 75% off sale. And it puts this red thing across the top and it says percentage must be 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, all the way to 100. Okay, well it's 75 and 75 was in there. And I'm like, what the heck? So I tried it again and I tried it again and I tried it again. Then I tried 50%. Still get the same thing. Percent must be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way to 100. Like, what the heck? So then I signed out of eBay. I signed back in, tried it again, wouldn't do it. So I thought, okay, until this is fixed, I'm going to go over to my current 75% off sale. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to extend the sale another couple of days. I go over there to extend it. Same thing, except this time it says discount must be five or 60%. Where, where do they come up with that? Wouldn't let me extend it. So get back on the phone with eBay have them call me, tell them this, you know, I said, and I, I, this poor eBay rep, and she can't do anything about it, but it made me feel, I said, you know, I'm really, really frustrated right now. I said, 
you know, first they take my second store categories away. Then I have like one of the best days of selling I've ever had on eBay. And then the very next day, I can't even run a freaking sale. And I said, and I said, and she's like, well, it's going to be 24 hours before they even get to your ticket. But this sounds like an IT problem. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, of course, you know. I don't know if eBay's ever going to do better. I am still tossing around some ideas about other platforms because if things keep going this way, I mean, I say this every year and eBay's still alive and kicking. I don't think eBay will ever go away, but I'm not sure that in the future this is going to be the platform for me, you know? And when Poshmark changed the fees a couple of weeks ago to buyer paying part of the fee, my sales went up, which I thought was bizarre. And now they're getting ready to change it back. So I don't know. My silent auctions are working pretty well. I'm making sales on those. However, on Posh Sidekick, I turned off the notifications um, for when people speak up in the show and they have a question. I've turned that off because recently they're asking me stupid, stupid questions. And when they do ask a valid question, I'm usually not able to that's my dentist just ignore that um anyway usually when they do ask a valid question i'm not in a place where i can answer it and a lot of times they want me to rerun an item because i'm running a hundred items at a time and i know how to do that technically but i'm afraid i'm gonna mess it up but it's usually like when i'm at the vet's office which is where we're going now aren't we babies we're gonna go to the vet mm -hmm. finney's gonna get his allergy shot so I am, I turned them notifications off and that way I don't stress out about whether or not I answer their question and then also stress out when I go over there to see the question and it's something like NNN and you're like, what the heck is NNN or um, they'll say for X question mark, what the heck does that mean? So then I have to take the time to write, I don't understand your question, please explain. What does 4x question mark mean? Well, a lot of times it means, do you have any items in a 4x? Well, out of that 100 items, there's going to be a 4x in there. Why don't you go to my closet and see, you know? Um, or they'll say, do you have any 5x sweaters? Well, go to my closet and see. You know, like, I don't know. I know I do, but I don't know. Like, go to my closet and see. Like, what? So I just turned them off and then I don't have to deal with it. And I'm sure I'm missing some sales because I'm not answering a couple of questions, but it's just not worth my time. And, and I'm still getting messages on Poshmark. What is the lowest you will take for this item? And I reply, what is the most you will pay for this item? Like, I'm not going to announce that publicly. What's the lowest I'm going to take for this item? Or I usually say, make me an offer, you know? Um, a lot of times I just ignore them. I thought eBay buyers were nuts, but beginning to think they want all, all went over to Poshmark. All right, so let me think about what else is going on. All right, so today when I get home, I have four machines to photograph, about 15 pieces of clothing to photograph, and list those, all right? And then I am now currently inventorying the green section. And it has about 56 items. I've already done about 28. So I have about 28 more. That'll give me some more drafts. And then I'm going to start another section because I don't have anything else measured. I have about 20 more pieces of clothing from my haul that need to be measured and drafted. And I have about 20 more pieces of home decor. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you guys. I went to the flea market the other day and I don't know what the deal is with this flea market Kimmy if you're watching me later this flea market is going down lady there's hardly any vendors there and it was not hot outside hardly any vendors hardly any people but I did do very very well on the home decor paid a dollar a piece for each item got four machines 
and um, one guy had like 45 coffee makers, uh, but a lot of them were the same Keurig, the Aqua Marine Keurig that I never would sell that. Um, but he said he started out with 100 machines, and so he's, he was selling them for $15 each, so I bought three machines, that was $45, and then I bought another machine for five or ten dollars that sells for about 89 so I don't know if I'm gonna part it out or not so and then the home decor was just everywhere I did really really well in the home decor and I'm just gonna stop now um, and I also went to Goodwill in, a, in another store on my way to my parents from the flea market so I think I've decided now that I am NOT going to purchase any more home decor from Value Village uh, also known as Sabres because I had trouble getting the marker off of some of the items. I mean, maybe I will get some, like if it's written on the glass or something or plastic, but if it's written on the wood, I'm no longer purchasing because some of them did not come out because of the texture in the wood. And I ended up having to toss the item. And then, uh, and I did bring my batteries to the flea market, but the clock that I wanted didn't work. I was so bummed. And then I've also decided, and Bridget, if you're listening, you'll be interested in this maybe, knowing that when I was sealing my home decor items to shelve them, I was wrapping them and wrapping them and wrapping them in bubble wrap to the point of where all I had to do was grab them, put them in the box, and ship them. But that was taking so much of my bubble wrap. And I'm like, this is crazy. I may never sell this item and I'm using all of this bubble wrap. So what I'm doing now is when I list it, I wrap it like once or twice in bubble wrap just so that if I hit it, I won't scratch it. You know, if I touch it, it won't break anything. Um, but you can still feel the item under and then I'm just very careful when I stack them. And I'm going to have to start putting them in tubs because now I have 43, I think, 44 pieces of home decor. And then I have about another 15. So I'm, I think I'm going to stop. And for now, if I happen to be in a Goodwill, I'll look. Because they have the stickers that come off really, really easy. And... Um, yeah, and I raked, I raked it in at the, at the Christian bookstore. I thought I was paying like 2 and $3 for each piece, and I got up to the front, and I had a whole bunch of stuff, and it was $14. And I'm like, is that uh, total correct? And she says, yes, ma'am. And I'm like, oh, well, okay, because I thought I was going to be paying like double that. So I got a really good deal on that. Let's see if there's anything else I can tell you. Um my parents are in Branson. My brother drove them. They're having a marvelous time. Um, it's wonderful to see my brother spending time with my parents, bonding more with them. And, you know, the pictures, they're happy. Um, it was the right choice. There have been a lot of decisions that had to be made on the trip that I know my parents were glad that my brother was there to make the decisions and they're having a good time. He's letting them spend some time alone. He's dropping them off at shows and letting them have some alone time because this is really their trip. He's just the chauffeur, but he's getting the perk of spending. I did this a few years ago. I drove them. I drove with them to um, Indiana, but my dad drove part that way. Um, I didn't drive it all myself. So I hope y'all are having a wonderful week. I hope your sales are good. I mean, I think my, my 30 day total, I mean, my, my one week total, I told y'all I like it to be at least 1200. It's been teetering between 950 and 1100 this week. So it, it's trying. Um, when I had a really good day, like the other day, it went way up. And then the next day it went back down. My weight is still at six pounds. I hope that you're watching my shorts where I show you what I eat every day. I'm really kind of enjoying that. It's making me get up and, you know, get ready because i got to be in front of the camera. Um, sometimes I'm on pajamas on. Um, but I'm, I'm enjoying, not enjoying, 
Yesterday I used all but 16 calories and I was hungry that last night and I couldn't find anything for 16 calories. I mean, I could have eaten three pickle spears, but I didn't feel like three pickle spears. So, but I had a lunch that was 570 calories yesterday. It was an H-E-B prepared meal, orange chicken. It was so yummy, but 570, ugh. Today I'm making homemade chicken and dumplings. So I've already put those calories in to the app so I know how to eat um, during the day so that I'll have calories left. So I've already put those calories in. As soon as we get home, babies, gotta start the chicken and dumplings because it takes all day to cook the chicken. And I don't know, if I have anything else to say, I'll stick it in here. But hopefully I will go live um, sometime. Maybe that has to be Thursday because Friday I work. Hopefully I'll go live. I don't know. I miss talking to you guys. And uh, don't forget my affiliate links below because I know a lot of you are doing Christmas shopping right now. So um, all you have to do is just click on a link, an Amazon affiliate link below, and then just shop. Shop for your family, your business. Doesn't matter what you buy, but whatever you purchase in 24 hours, I get a, I get a small kickback from Amazon. And I really, really would appreciate that. Since money's kind of tight right now. All right. Well, you guys take it easy. Don't forget that we are all in this business boat together. So paddle on. And may God keep you in his pocket. Bye.